Welcome to another spirit filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well. I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Your graces are going to be imparted onto you, and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. The moment the light of God comes to you, the revealed word. Once it comes to you, it sustains the ability to transition you to a new realm, a new dimension, a new horizon. Hallelujah. The Bible says in Ezekiel chapter 2 from verse 1, it said, Son of man, stand up upon your feet and I will speak unto you. And he had no strength to arise from that position. Verse 2 says, And the Spirit entered me when he spake unto me and set me upon my feet. Hallelujah. Someone by the light of God's word that is coming upon you, you are rising from that level. Amen. Say a believing amen. amen. You are rising from that position in the name of Jesus. For someone after this meeting, you will look at your former self and you will not find it again. Amen. You will so transition, you will be a marvel, a sign and a wonder to yourself. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now, I'm sharing a few things along the lines of your theme, and I pray in the name of Jesus that the Lord will grant us understanding. Amen, amen and amen. When God calls a people, every time God wants to make a praise out of a people, he first calls them. Doesn't matter where he finds them. He calls them. That is the most important thing. He will find some like the prodigal son, lost. He will find some like the nation of Israel in Egypt, in bondage and captivity. It doesn't matter where he finds them. The most important thing is that the moment God calls you, it means you're ready to live where you are, to the place of prophecy and to the place of destiny. But when he calls men in order of spiritual priority, he does not call you to an assignment. He calls you to himself. Hallelujah. Out of your relationship with him, a mandate is born. Are we together now? The mandate is not without an encounter with the God of the Bible. In Colossians chapter 4 and verse 17, he says, Say unto Archippus that the ministry which thou hast received in the Lord, not from the Lord, in the Lord, it says that thou be faithful towards it, paraphrasing. So he's saying that when God calls men, he called the disciples to be with him and then that he might send them. So the protocol of how God leads people and grants them the mandate to be witnesses is that he finds them wherever he finds them. He calls them to himself and then out of the abundance of that fellowship, that encounter and the growth that comes from that encounter, he now sends them to represent him. It's important that we understand this because if you ever assume any task or any responsibility in this kingdom without an encounter with the one who sent you, you will fail. There is something only his presence can give men that becomes the reason why they succeed. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 3 from verse 5 to 7, it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. And it says to lean not onto your own understanding. The next verse says, in all your ways, acknowledge him, acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. Are we still together? So Moses began to pray. I hope you know that the nation of Israel were historically warriors even though they had been locked up in captivity for a period of 430 years here's moses now moses brought them out of egypt uh, you know to a land flowing with milk and honey and whilst on that journey moses made a request and said lord do not let us depart from here we have every other thing we left with gold we left with riches we left with supplies but all those things stand useless if your presence does not go with us so when god calls a people he calls them to himself. And then, out of the abundance of what his presence does to them, 
he can send them fearlessly to the nations it's important we have this the second thing that i may want to point out if you're writing is that god's desire and please i want you to listen to this god's desire for you and i god's desire for every believer is that we eventually become a manifestation of the glory of god in experience please i want you to listen god's goal is not just to take us to heaven else there would be no need for teaching there would be no need for church there would be no need for the fivefold ministry god's goal was not just to save us from sin it was part of the program that ultimately his desire for you and i is that in and through our lives please listen that we eventually become a manifestation of the glory of god hallelujah is the hebrew word kabod the greek is doxa it means the weightiness of a thing when you talk about the glory of a thing you have to probe into the features of that thing why is it expensive why is it rare why is it desirable so the glory of an electronic gadget is in the dexterity of his features whether speed whether accessibility are we together now yes when you talk about the glory of god you're talking about everything that makes god god his wisdom his favor his power so i'm saying that god's intent for you and i is that eventually may not be immediately eventually that my life and your life becomes a holistic capture of the glory of god that men can learn god as they look at your life your life becomes a living epistle and if your life fails to achieve that in your lifetime listen carefully it does not matter whether you succeed career wise it does not matter whether you succeed in your vocation you would have failed to represent god effectively to your generation so god's goal is that eventually my life and your life that we become manifestations of the glory of god if you believe that shout aloud amen, amen. the meaning of that is that your results matter to god um, it's important you cannot discuss the subject of being a sign and a wonder or an extraordinary believer if you do not come to a personal appreciation of the value of results you need to know that results benefit more than the one producing it the name of the lord is at stake as far as the world of men is concerned and your result was designed to be the system that brings credibility and honor to the name of the lord john chapter 15 and verse 8 the bible says hearing is our father glorified are we still together it says when ye bear much fruit so shall you be my disciples you justify the investment of the heavenly resources over your destiny when you produce results same john 15 and verse 16 it says you have not chosen me but i have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bear fruit are we bible students it says and that your fruit should remain longevity of impact lasting your fruit should remain in matthew chapter 5 jesus was teaching in what we know theologically as the beatitudes when we get to verse 13 he begins a very interesting discussion he says ye are the salt of the earth and the assignment of salt is twofold to preserve and to add taste or value he says you are the salt of the earth then he says but if the salt has lost its saltiness or its savour, he says wherewith shall it be salted again it is good for nothing except to be trodden thrown down and trodden under foot of men then he says you are the light of the world you are a city that is set on a hill that cannot be hidden neither do men light a lamp and put it under a bushel he says but that it is put on the lampstand the candlestick and it gives light to everyone in the room verse 16 now says let your light so shine the word let means permit allow do not restrain allow your light to so shine not before angels not before spirit to so shine someone say so shine prophesy say so shine your light to shine to a level where it becomes impossible to be ignored. 
and he says by so doing you glorify your father Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10 says we are his workmanship the workmanship of a man is an expression of his intelligence and creativity we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto 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 this is the intent unto good works which God had preordained I like the word preordained meaning he's not scratching his head wondering what to make out of my life it's a preordination there is a dimension of glory he's already earmarked for the saints to step into are you understanding me so far Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 10 he says to the intent Paul speaking that now unto principalities and powers might be made known by the church the ecclesia the manifold multifaceted wisdom of God that means eventually the world should stand in awe when they look at a believer a believer should be an object of wonder a believer should be an object of praise you should import a level of reality that is not easily affordable in the world of men they would know that it takes God to produce this kind of results there are things that are possible with men but there are certain possibilities that implicate you immediately it shows that you must have partnership with the spirit Nicodemus comes to Jesus by night John chapter 3 from verse 1 he says rabbi we know that thou art a teacher sent from God for no man can do these miracles which thou doest except there are results men cannot produce unassisted it is impossible the creativity the intelligence the power the wisdom of men cannot stretch them so far if you see an ordinary man produce that result it tells you that he's been assisted by God the meaning of all this is that from today your life ceases to be ordinary in the name of Jesus Christ that in every area of calling profession vocation you will import a level of excellence that is not ordinary you will import a level of wisdom and creativity that your life will be verses on the open people will look at you and learn God in a way they have never known you believe that shout amen so God desires that our lives capture results results that bring glory to the name of the Lord the third point I want you to take note of I wrote here that every believer in Christ now listen what I said before now is the reason why I'm about to say a very profound statement that the empowerment of the believer is God's commitment to help achieve the goal I just explained the value of spiritual empowerment is to this end that believers be fruitful are we together that believers produce that believers advance that believers become objects of praise that while serving the purposes of the kingdom your life does not fail to capture and reveal the glory of God it is in support of that agenda that the subject of empowerment becomes necessary I made it I wrote something here and I wanted to listen every believer in Christ I said has access to the empowerment of the Spirit to make you an effective witness but you see access does not equal possession our discussion begins now every believer in Christ the moment you confess the lordship of jesus over your life according to romans chapter 10 9 and 10 according to john 3 16 are we together now the moment you confess the lordship in order of spiritual priority this is the first port of call that in your pursuit to becoming like god living a life of excellence and beauty and glory it is important you follow the protocol the protocol number one is an encounter with the son of god jesus you can encounter a man of god you can encounter religion you can encounter a church none of them in themselves can impart eternal life the bible says this is the record that god had given us eternal life but he structured eternal life such that you must encounter the son 
to have that life it says he that does not have the son does not have life do we agree yes so when you receive the son it's important for you to know that there are dimensions beyond that initial salvation experience leading to empowerment the empowerment of the spirit is vital and is necessary to the ex for the excelling of the saints if you are not empowered you will live an ineffective life ineffective in every sense and in every ramification now isaiah chapter 8 and verse 18 isaiah chapter 8 and verse 18 makes a very profound statement um okay beautiful i want us to read it together if you see it projected ready one to read uh-huh thank you it says i and the children that the lord has given me your child there does not just mean a biological person anything that comes out of you is your child your business is your child your vision is your child it says i and the children that the lord has given me i and the business that the lord has given me i and the school that the lord has given me i and the church that the lord has given me everything around you he says we are for signs and for wonders in israel signs and for wonders in lagos in nigeria in africa are we together now i and the children that the lord has given me are for signs and wonders The Bible tells us in Zechariah chapter 8 and verse 23. Zechariah 8 and verse 23. Please give it to us so that I'll tie up a few things. Zechariah 8 and verse 23. My goodness. Profound scripture. Let's know when you find it, media, Zechariah chapter 8 and verse 23. Let me pull it up here very quickly. Beautiful. It says, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, in those days, someone said these are the days. In those days it shall come to pass, uh -huh, that ten men shall take hold out of all the languages of the nations, even shall take hold of the skirt of him that is a Jew, a covenant person, saying, we will go with you. We will go with you for we have heard. This is why we will go with you. We have heard that God is with you. We have seen the results from your business. We have seen the results from your life. It is clear, unmistakably clear that God is with you. The Bible says they will come. Reminds me of Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 1. It says, arise, amplified, says from the depression and the prostration that circumstances have kept you. It says, rise to a new light. Arise, shine, it says, for your light is come. And the glory, there you have it again. The glory of the Lord is risen upon you. It says, for darkness shall cover the earth is the expression to who are bohu confusion and chaos and gross darkness the people he says but upon you the glory of god shall arise i like verse 3 my god i receive it as a prophecy for myself that gentiles shall come to your light gentiles he never said they will come to you no gentiles shall come to your light and their kings to the brightness of your rising gentiles shall come to your light their kings to the brightness of your rising gentiles shall come to your light they won't ask you where you are coming from mm -mm. Mm -mm. provided you carry that light the world is too dark for light bearers to be ignored no are we together? But thou, O oh Lord, art a shield for me. My glory 
you lift my hand But thou, O oh Lord, art a shield for me My glory, the lifter up of my hand I like that part You're my glory, the lifter up of my hand Someone prophesied you're my glory the lifter up of my head it doesn't matter what the devil does you're my glory the lifter up of my head hallelujah let me give you three keys tonight very quickly within the time that i have i came to share with you three keys that can cause any man to become inexperienced a sign and a wonder not just to produce signs and wonders but to become a personification of this realm and this reality a sign and a wonder that your life becomes a fulfillment of prophecy when people see you they remember everything God has said because your life becomes they can see verses being fulfilled in your life when they look at your life they can see Deuteronomy chapter 28 from verse 1 and 2 that you shall be exalted above the nations of the earth and this blessing shall come upon you and overtake you they look at your life and you are like a well-watered garden your life becomes an explanation of the faithfulness of God the grace of God made manifest do you believe that please I want you to lend me your attention for the next few minutes because you see I told you that according to Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 6 the Bible says that the God of our father had blessed us with all spiritual blessings 1 3 Ephesians 1 3 had blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ these are prophetic realities finished in Christ but you see the new birth gives the believer access not just experience access access does not equal possession access means that the the possibility for possession has been created are we together now if I gave you a check of a million naira um, it is safe to begin negotiations with that check if you trust me but if the person needs cash there is a technology that has to convert that check to cash are we together so you can hold a check like a piece of paper and yet you will be surprised that you will not be able to do much with it if you say I am a million naira richer you are not lying but your lack your inability to cash that check will eventually make you look like a liar so I can't call you a liar because I see a check on your hand but you are not able to make any purchases with it necessarily you see that now so access does not equal possession there are many believers in the body of Christ bragging over access and that is not wrong except that there has to be a technology of conversion to turn access to possession the Bible says the word became flesh the word became flesh there was a conversion process it became flesh then it dwelt among us as flesh then the Bible says we beheld we beheld the word became flesh the business was made manifest the favor was made manifest for as long as we keep claiming things that never find expression in our world we mock ourselves and our convictions the Christian experience was never supposed to just be believed arbitrarily you start by believing but you can taste and see that the Lord is good there is an experience are we together now the Bible says in Acts chapter 8, I hope we're still together. Acts chapter 8 from verse 5, it says, Philip went down to Samaria and there he preached Christ unto them. And that the people gave heed with one accord, listening intently to the things that Philip spake. Why? Because they heard, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. He did not just carry grammar or language. When he said God lifts, they saw that God lifts. When he said God restore, it's important for people to see what you are saying God can do. <laughs> Hallelujah. I and the children that the Lord has given me, we are for signs and wonders. Key number one, for every believer who means business with God, 
business with destiny and you intend to become a manifestation of this prophetic word that nations men all and sundry will call you a sign and a wonder the first key is that you must have an experience with the God of the Bible now don't assume you understand what I just said please follow carefully you must have an experience with the God of the Bible I would always make reference to a statement that I heard and I learned years ago the God you know is the God you reveal to your world you cannot reveal a lifting God when you have not encountered him as a lifting God the God you know the one you meet is the one you reveal to your world I hope you know that the God of Abraham is still the God of Isaac is still the God of Jacob but his revelation according to these names is not the same no there is what the God of Abraham alone can do that the revelation of him as the God of Isaac will not do what Jairah would do is not what Rapha will do although it is the same God are we together now yes so the God that you encounter is the one you reveal to your world if your revelation of God is weak and impotent it is because your encounter is the same weak and important Moses said who shall I tell Pharaoh has sent me I cannot go and stand before Pharaoh and advocate an exodus just blindly let my people go Pharaoh will say what is the meaning of that where was that God for 430 years while these people were in captivity and Moses said the issue is not the captivity the issue is not Pharaoh the issue is not your people the issue is me and you who shall I tell them has sent me I assure you that life and destiny will ask you this question who sent you who sent you that you want to build the biggest business across Africa by what audacity do you know the controlling spirits that have tied and destroyed lives who sent you life will ask you who sent you that you intend to be the first person from your family to rise and lift up the name of Jesus Christ who sent you the God you know is the one you reveal to your world knowing another man's God is a good starting point but you must get to a point where he becomes your God Paul said but I know whom I have believed and I am persuaded Is someone learning your conviction in this kingdom is a product of the depth of your encounter please listen believers many times believers do not take time to know God they just brush over and the next thing they jump to principles wanting to succeed wanting to excel it does not happen that way no time invested in knowing God is a waste no time if you have 10 days for exploits and you use nine days to know God you were not foolish because the Bible says Daniel 11 and verse 32 but the people he never said but everyone the people that do know their God they shall be capacity number two they shall do exploits not talk exploits not explain exploits the people that do know their God the people that do know the lifter the people that do know the restorer the people that do know the helper you are strengthened in the place of encounters the reason why we fall off when things happen around our lives good or bad is because our encounters are not deep enough to keep us strong and so we ask God all kinds of questions there's something you know about God that you laugh at failure as it laughs at you until it leaves you will worry failure through your confidence and it will leave because there is something you know about God for instance the Lord is my light and my salvation of whom shall I be afraid of is that in your Bible
did you ever read in your Bible that a thousand shall fall by your side and ten thousand by your right side but that none will hurt you with your eyes shall you see and behold the reward of the wicked is it in your Bible that I lay me down and I slept some three it says I wait for the Lord sustain me who sustains men the Lord Do you believe this about God? You see, your confidence and your audacity in life, I'm not talking of bragging. I'm not talking of pride. I'm talking of confidence that is built on account of the God you have met. Let me tell you this. Life has a very nasty way of bullying men. Did you hear what I said? It will use the reference of your background to bully you. Satan will move through systems and structures and probe you. You think you can become anything. You ask Gideon why he was hiding. Life for you. Life can bully a warrior to hide. But when he came, he called him by his destiny. You are a mighty man of valor. I wonder how many mighty men have been in hiding because they have not met a mighty God. When you meet a mighty God, you cannot be a weak man. Because the Bible says, as we behold him, we are changed. Not into what we want, into what we are beholding. Is someone learning now? You need an encounter with God. You are a man of God here. You need an encounter with God. A businessman, an encounter with God. God has called you to be a witness, advancing the purposes of the kingdom, I tell you, life will bully you into mediocrity if you do not know God. Men will look at you and say, you do not add up. You can't be the director in that company. By what parameters? Ah. When Saul looked at David, he said, David, I love you. You're a little boy. I, I love you too much to allow you die a miserable death in front of Goliath. And David said, King... You are a warrior. I'm a teenager. But let me tell you a story you do not know about me. Once upon a time, whilst I was in the wilderness, no Instagram, no Facebook, no one to snap me and let the world see. While I was in that wilderness, listen carefully, a lion came. There was no help. So I learned how to depend on God. A bear came. There was no human. I, I learned from the wilderness the vanity of the help of men without God. And I tore it with my bare hands. In other words, king, you are a warrior. Do men have the ability to tear animals by their own strength? But not when the spirit of might comes on a man. He said it is that audacity that sponsors my confidence. Allow me to take care of Goliath. And Saul now carried his armory. You see, what God trains you with is what you will use in battle. If God trained you with prayer, don't use another tool. If God trained you with scripture, don't use another tool. Are we together now? If God trained you with wisdom, pay attention to the tools that are used during your training process. That is what will bring Goliath. Nothing wrong with the armory of Saul. There are many believers after many years of investment with the spirit the world now begins to tell you drop your tools no prayer drop that prayer it doesn't make sense drop fasting it doesn't make sense drop the word it doesn't make sense wisdom oh no relationships not exactly drop them and before you know it you are in battle with tools you were not trained to use hmm. are we learning and David turned it to Saul and said, I will use what he trained me with. When he stood before Goliath, Goliath said, am I a dog? Israel, you bring this little boy, I will kill him. Killing him is not the issue, it's how I would do it. I mean, you want me to give you a very bad memory? I mean, am I a dog? And David kept quiet. Silence is not fear. Silence is not fear. Let me tell you the truth. When mighty men are silent, it is wisdom walking. Ask Jesus, 
when they met Jesus and brought a woman who was caught in adultery you would think because sometimes knowledge without wisdom makes you talk yourself even to failure silence and he wrote on the ground maybe that's what Adam and Eve would have done if they were a little silent the Bible says even a fool when he's silent is regarded silence can create perception and he writes down <laughs> and then he says he who is without sin should cast the first stone and that was the end of it so David stands before Goliath and says Goliath who is this uncircumcised Philistine you come to me with your bows you come to me with your spears but I come to you in the name there is a God that I met in the wilderness He's a warrior too. He trains men to fight. He says, by you, I will run through a troop. And by my God, I will leap over a wall. No, you don't have that capacity to leap over a wall. You try that, you will go to the hospital. But not when God is holding your hands. I'm saying this to someone. Listen, I want you to believe what you are hearing me say. God can help men. Did you hear what I said? God can help men. He can help ordinary men to be extraordinary. I'm telling you, God can help men. Woe betides the man who stands the way of a man God is helping. God can help men. God can help men. Maybe this is a prophetic word for someone. You have done everything in your own strength, intellectual strength, financial strength let me tell you the truth God can help men and help has two assignments to make things possible and to make things easy when God comes to help you the intent behind his providing help is to make things possible and then to make things easy hallelujah an encounter with God Great men in the kingdom are made on the strength of their encounters with the God of the Bible. I can share with you stories, stories in my own life. And I'm grateful to God for the honor of the many encounters he's given me. When I talk of encounters, I'm not limiting it to supernatural visionary encounters. The Lord appeared unto Samuel in Shiloh by his word. God can appear to men by his word, giving light even from scripture. It doesn't always have to be a visionary, out-of-body encounter. Not everybody may have the privilege of meeting Jesus as a person, encountering angels. No, 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 no. But once you can encounter his word, his word, not just the letter, the spirit behind it, you can read every day, fear not, but the daylight comes from that scripture. You see that? It comes with a grace that empowers you to fear not. That what would have made you afraid will no longer make you afraid because light has come from scripture. Listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. Spend time to know God by his word. Don't be ignorant. If you want to excel in life and destiny, the God that you know, the truths that you know, that is what will give you confidence, is what will give you audacity. Many years ago, I read a few things in scripture. And looking from hindsight now, sometimes I'm tempted to laugh at myself, but I was foolish enough to believe God. And I was foolish enough to believe them. There is nothing God has said concerning my life that I do not believe because every time you believe he gives you power to become as many as believed him he gave them there is a gift that follows believing it's called the power to become say it after me the power to become one more time the power to become what you have believed is given after you believe not before the power to become you believe that God lifts you. The power to be lifted is released. You believe that God is your salvation. The power to become 
happens when you can believe him enough. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.